Hey, Sean Jantz here. I'm going to do a quick battle plan for September, Tuesday the 1st. <clears throat> Already coming into September now. We're starting, uh, volume's definitely going to be picking up. So usually when you go into <clears throat> uh, the summer months, uh, volume usually stays pretty light, right? And so we're now kind of getting out of summer and going into the rest of the year. Let, I just want to show you guys, if you haven't been trading uh, very long, I can show you what happened last year, right? You can kind of see last year we had a lot, a lot of movement coming in here was September, October we had a huge move down, October we, November we had a huge move back up, Christmas we had a you know up down up down, and then it finally sl slowed down going into March. But you can see these moves here for um, almost six months. There was big moves and then you can see you know kind of the spring summer months look how consolidated we are now we're coming back into uh you know potentially volume i don't know if we're going to start getting huge moves again but you know if if seasonality repeats itself and it usually does um we can expect to see you know probably i'm not not that much but uh, you can kind of know what i mean right we can probably expect to see a larger range a lot more movement in the markets a lot of people getting in and out of positions going into the end of the year a lot of mutual funds start ending money closer to the end of the year they don't want to show you know they start doing getting creative with their with their with their rates right and they do that by you know managing the positions going into the end of the year so we may end up seeing bigger moves less smaller ranges but uh, nothing's going to change right it's just it's just you just you just adapt to the market. So I'm going to quickly go in here and do a trade plan for slash ES and slash TF, and I'm going to start on the four-hour chart um, slash ES. And so notice last week we were talking about this four-hour sell trigger here, which I said you know go grab anything, go grab any in the, in the money binaries you want up here, free money, right? I think you can watch Thursday night's trade plan or maybe even Friday night's trade plan. Go grab whatever you want, right? So yes, we did get that nice down move. And um, if we go ahead and take our Fibonacci retracement here, let's draw it from the high to the low. We're currently coming right into around a 38.2 uh, support level, which is right around 1930. So I can't say the 38.2 is honestly the strongest support level. More support levels are probably going to be closer to right around that 50 to 61.8. But some people may not be drawing it from there just because of how uh, that's kind of like a little fake low, honestly. A couple people may be drawing their fibs from here to here, which puts us still pretty much almost to that 38.8, closer to the 50 though. Uh, you know, gets us to around the 1935. So what I'm saying is there there may be potential for some support coming into this market tomorrow. And we're already getting quite a few sellers here overnight. And so expect this too. Uh, I've been trading the last six months, been trading the last six months. There has been very, very little movement overnight, very little. And lately we're getting a lot of movement overnight. We're already down minus 1.65%. We've already moved 32 points. So if we look to the plot chart for potentials tomorrow, we already almost moved the minus one deviation. But the good news is when we look to the left, we have some structure to the left to play off of this. And so this won't be my best trade plan just because I hate falling knives and I hate catching falling knives. Uh, but I'm going to try and at least put some context on this. I'll be in the chat room all day tomorrow, so I'll be able to help out. But this may not be my best trade plan I've put together. But obviously you can see we made a huge move down. It went almost to the tick to Wednesday's POC, which is right at that 1930. And if we draw our FIB, the 1930 was right at that 38.2 uh, support level. If we look to the left, though, right around here, we do got a lot of movement right around that 1930 1940 so notice how we had resistance resistance a little bit of resistance here which now then could become support for tomorrow but here's something super important what I mean by this may not be my best trade plans because there still may be quite a bit of movement overnight that uh, it'll completely change you know the plan I'll be in the trade room though helping out but um, 
if I buy this chart tomorrow, okay, we're already making a new, this isn't a new five day low, but we're making a new two day low. And so here's my reference point for a new low. And so if I buy this chart, let's say we get a little bit of support, we get some sellers coming in, they cannot take it lower than where they just took it here. I don't know, they may make a new low. And if they do, if you take a buy, it has to, the, the buy trigger has to happen higher than where they were able to take it here overnight. So that's very, very important that if I be a buyer tomorrow, probably five minute charts, you'll probably see the uh, higher low right there. And if I am due to take a buy trade tomorrow, I want to stay as close to at the money as I possibly can down here. So that means anywhere from 55 to 65. And then TP early, as soon as it moves up and you see a sell trigger, take profit. So that could probably be anywhere. Get in at 55, take profit at 85, boom, done deal. Two contracts, three contracts, 90, 100 bucks. Okay, so just stay as close to at the money and then you can put your stop losses somewhere down here and you're not gonna lose that much. Honestly, you'll lose $25. So you're basically risking 25 to make 25, almost, pretty much, right? So say you buy at 55, stop loss at 25, that's 30. Um, and then take profit at 85. So basically, it's a 30, risk 30 to make 30. Not a bad gig. And then when you do it right around the minus 0.1, you have a 70% chance of profit. So it's a one to one risk to reward with a 70% profit. You won't find that anywhere else in the world, right? You see so many people at casinos when it's like, what are you doing at a casino? You might as well just move to Nadex and I'll increase the probabilities for you tenfold and I'll put the probabilities back in your favor instead of the casinos. So if I do take a buy, it's got to be as close to at the money as possible. Take profit early once I get that green. I'll be in the trade room helping out if we buy the minus one. They may take it lower even overnight. I'm still not against taking that buy, but it's got to be... Uh, wherever they take it, that's my reference point. I then wait for the bulls to take a little bit. I don't sell there, obviously. I wait for the bears to take back control. And then I just wait for them to fail to take it lower. I then enter here, catch the up move, take profit. So pretty, pretty, very, very simple. That's how you manage a minus one. I have tons of videos on how to play this. Uh, not tons, at least four live trades of me entering minus ones. So if you go into my uh, binary trade group uh, channel on YouTube and you go to this playlist called Live Nadex Trading and there's a video in here that says, you know, there's one that says how to effectively enter an at the money trade. So uh, that'll help you too. And then it says Nadex Live Trading, buying a minus one deviation. This video shows you live you. trade on how to properly buy a minus one. I talk exactly how to wait for that higher low and enter right there. It's very, very simple. You should you should be able to do it blindfolded. And get out the money, and then, you know, obviously you can get your stop losses going too. It's very, very easy. I'll be in the trade room too. As far as sell triggers, you got sell triggers right there at settlement. So note, look at all this support right here. Support, 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 break. So now what could this potentially become? You guessed it, resistance, right? So I don't know if I like, if we can actually draw a mini fib here. So let's actually draw a mini fib. So we'll draw from the high here. Let's actually the high right there to the low. 61.8, guess exactly where it is. So again, 61.8 is your best resistance level. It's exactly where settlement is. And that's exactly where all of that support was. Potentially this could make a run sell trigger there or sell trigger at value area low again though if it gets back in 80 percent rule you can tp here and here it's a very very small value area but it's still um, 40 dollars from low to high one contract so i'll be in the trade room too helping out on that so really again it's just going to depend i'm not entering anything here overnight absolutely not i never buy overnight almost never I've gotten bit so many times. I'm okay selling overnight. I'll sell a four hour chart. I will never buy a four hour chart anymore. I've lost like three in a row doing that and I'm done. So I don't buy overnight. I'm gonna notice that we got the new low here. 
I'm going to wait and then buy that one, but it's got to be higher. Get out the money. Take profit. Should be a decent day. So I'm going to quickly move over to the TF chart. I went a little long, but that's some great training right there. Hopefully it can be a follow through for tomorrow so that you can kind of see exactly how that played out. I've done this so many times that it's just like, it's almost like, a, um, what do you call it? Groundhog's Day, right? You've just done these so many times that it's just so mechanical. We moved over to the TF chart. It's 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 getting hammered right now too. It's already down a percent. It's down 13 points. Four-hour chart's a little bit different though, as far as it almost looks like this has more room to go. Notice how it's almost stuck here in the middle. Support's still down here, and so if we actually draw our fibs retracements, we'll draw from the high. We'll take it to the high there. Yeah, we're not even close to the 38.2, and we're not even close to the 50%. So it almost looks like it still has more room to go down. So I'm going to be cautious. So I, as far as being a buyer, I like the TES chart better. If we look at this plot chart, though, and you can kind of see this is only down to the minus 0 0.5. 1132 puts us down here to that minus 1. So same deal. I guess if you if you want to be a buyer, you can try this chart, right? Just buy that low right there. It's the higher low. Buy the higher low around that minus 0.5. This could keep tanking overnight. It's the exact same thing as the ES. Let it retrace and then buy the higher low right there. If this if the bears get after it, look at all this resistance we got right here. That is three POCs, a settlement, and value area low so that is five resistance plots right there five of them so that actually be a beauty if this retraces back and we have sell triggers here and maybe grab some dailies here potentially um, if that bl blasts through those resistance you got five resistance plots so these are this is why I plot my charts this is why I do this because I want stuff where they all come together like this because that's usually my favorite opportunities now if it busts through I then let it bust through I then wait to buy right there and then I got an 80 percent rule I honestly don't know if that's gonna happen to be honest it doesn't look like it will but if it does I'm ready I'm totally ready for it notice I'm pretty much ready for every direction on ES and TF I like the ES better buying around that minus one you got a 70% chance. I like sell triggers here, 80% chance here. If that comes down, I'm not buying there. I'm going to wait for retrace, and then I'll buy there at the money. Very, very simple plan. Uh, message me if you or comment if you have any questions.